Hello audience, as you can see, I finished the temporary wood frame that's going to hold the back of the body together while I assemble it. Now this took nowhere near as long as I figured, I thought this would take months, but it's incredibly simple and mostly made of straight lines, so I made it pretty easy. Also, I made a back panel. Now I didn't film this because it's really simple, it's just a flat panel with beads all around it and you've seen me make stuff like that a lot already. I did put an extra flange up here to make it stronger. I may not keep that, but it's helping with assembling it. And now in this video, we're going to make the panels that go in these corners. Just for the sake of argument, I'm going to call them filler panels. And we're going to weld the whole mess together. Now these are probably the most difficult panels to make on the entire body, because they curve around and they curve in. It's not a very big panel, so that makes it easier, but still. And it needs to fit both sides pretty well. And when it gets welded together, it determines where these panels fit for good. I've been trying to put off making these as long as I can just because of how difficult they are. But, gotta do it sometime. Also, I finished the quarter panels. I bent the edge over on the bottom. I forgot to mention in the previous video that this year actually has a bead that goes across the bottom of it all the way around the body. And this was 1913 only. I considered not putting it in because you don't even see it with the rear fender on, but I did it anyway. And you're probably noticing what happened here. Well, I ended up putting this line in the wrong location after I tried fitting it on this form. Now. I took a while thinking about what I'm going to do about this, and I decided to just plasma cut this edge off, and then fit the quarter panel how it wants, fit this edge how it wants, and weld it back on. It's just tack welded on for now, in case it's still wrong. Now this looks kind of bad, it looks like I really screwed up, but really, there's not really any shame in doing this. This is kind of commonplace when trying to fit reproduction panels or even just random original panels, getting the door gaps just right. Sometimes you gotta do stuff like this, you just separate the door line and relocate it where it should be. And I'm pretty sure I'll have to do that down here too, when I start fitting the rear doors. Now one thing I keep forgetting to mention in these videos is the massive amount of differences there are between production bodies. Now, one big reason for this is Ford hired several different coach builders at the time to build the same body. I don't know how many. I read in an article somewhere that there were like five different ones working for Ford in 1913. Now, the reason is pretty simple. You hire five different coach builders, you get five times as much production. Now, though they're all working by the same blueprints, they all kind of had their own technique and their own way of getting stuff done. And each coach builder, they refined their own designs over the months of production. So there's an unknown number of changes that happened with these bodies during production. This can be a big problem if you're looking at original cars trying to figure out how this stuff goes, comparing them against each other, because you'll find a lot of differences. This wasn't a problem with me for this project because I expected it. It's been a problem with previous cars. Now one difference I've found in particular between different coach builders is this line here. Now, this line, I made it to slightly curve in. Most 1913 bodies I've seen, it's straight. It's at an angle, but it's a straight line. And that's kind of what I preferred. I wanted to make this a straight line because the rest of the lines on the body are straight. However, the car I was making patterns from was like this. And it made more sense to me in my mind because the back of the body curves in. It would have been more confusing to try to make it straight. But, after putting it together, I've noticed I could have made it in a straight line and it would have actually made the filler panel a little smaller. Now, I ended up putting too much curve in this. I figured the back of the body would curve in a lot more, but it's not really a problem because from here down, like I said, with the rear fender on, you can't see it. And I'm just being too picky. The fact of the matter is, these panels are too nice to throw away, so I'm just going to use them and shut up about it. I'm starting with a piece of sheet metal that I cut to the general size. I'll cut it to the exact size later. And the first thing I'm doing is putting the initial curve in it. 
Now there are proper tools that can do a better job, but I'm just bending it against an old car tire, and it seems to be working. Now the next big step is to curve it the other direction. Now to do that, I'm stretching the center of it with a wheel and shrinking the sides with a metal shrinker. Now this cheap Harbor Freight metal shrinker is not really powerful enough for this, but I'm compensating that by warming up the sheet metal red hot first. Again, not the proper thing to do, but it gets the job done. Then I roll over the entire thing with the wheel to smooth out any rough surfaces. I keep repeating these three steps several times until it gets the desired shape. And there it is. Fits reasonably okay. And it took a lot of trial and error to get to this point. You gotta fit it, shrink it a little, stretch it a little, wherever it needs. Now, it doesn't fit perfectly but it's close enough. It can be manipulated into fitting perfectly, which is good enough. So the next step is I'm going to undo some of the screws that hold these panels on and then slide this in where it should be. And then if it fits right, I'll mark where it needs to be cut and where the beads need to go and I'll take things from there. All right, I have the panel fitted and it looks good enough. Looks like it'll do. I've marked out the line where the bead needs to go. Now I need to roll this in. And I've marked where the edges are, so back here, anything beyond that, I'll have to trim down. And then I'll be ready to weld it in. Now, as you may have noticed, there's a bead on each side of the seam here. This was on all bodies. However, coach builders varied which panel the bead was on. Like, this one, for example, I put the bead on the quarter panel and the back panel, and this panel goes in behind them. Some I've seen are the opposite. Both beads are on this panel and it goes on top. I chose to make it this way because I figured it'd be easier to assemble. Alright, it fits pretty decent now. It took a few tries and a little fussing here and there, but it looks good. I put the bead across the top, and like I've mentioned in previous videos, when you put a bead around a piece that's curved like this, either the bead needs to stretch out or the part around it needs to shrink, which is why it came out so rough. I'm going to heat shrink this after it's welded together. The reason I'm not doing it now is because that'll distort it. Um, we're going to weld it from the inside and start from the top and work my way down. Now I have a set of these long vice grips. They're going to help out up to about there. I can clamp it together and weld it really tight. From there down, I've got some other tricks that'll work, but we'll worry about that when it's time. Alright, I started welding it on all around. Now, like I said, the vice grips wouldn't reach far enough, so down at the bottom here, I'm holding it together with screws. And then once it's welded together, I'll remove them and fill the holes in. On the back, this is right up against the form, so I can't weld it from the inside. So I drilled a bunch of holes, and I'm going to hold it down and fill the holes with weld, and hopefully it'll work. And that's all done. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not filming any of the welding, it's because in here there's just not much room to work with. You can barely see what I'm doing. So, not really any room for the camera, but you know what welding looks like. It's not really important for now. Now, these seams, they're not quite straight. They're a bit wonky, but that's easy to fix later. I'm going to remove it from the form eventually, and then weld it some more, but while it's here, 
I'm gonna go after this corner and start heat shrinking it. All right, it's a few days later. I finished welding it. I ground the outside of it smooth. So it looks pretty good now. Still needs a little bit of hammering here and there, but it's got the general shape to it. I also had to make a patch panel for the corner down here because the panel I made wasn't long enough. And I did the same thing to the other side. So that's done. As you probably noticed, I did this first. Now, when I rolled the bead on this one, I did a smoother job and I didn't need to heat shrink it as much. So anyway, that's it. It's ready for final assembly now. Well, this was a very big step forward. It was one that I was wondering would it ever get to. So now we have the entire back of the body. It's really taking shape, and this is really getting exciting. And if you're wondering why I don't look very excited, it's because I'm also very tired of working on this. So since we got this done, just for fun, I'm gonna throw this on the back of the car and see how it looks. Look at that. Well, this is really looking fantastic. Now, the next big step is I finally need to get started on the permanent wood frame. And then we can go to final assembly on this. Now before I do that, there's still a bunch more dimensions and information I need to get. And more importantly than that, I need to figure out a workspace where I can store this thing reasonably permanently. Because after I start constructing it with the wood and all that, it's very quickly going to get too big and heavy to move around or push aside. So when all that's going to happen, I have no idea. But I will get back to work on this thing as soon as I can. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.